uh, you have to like hit stream, but Twitch is like it's always live. So what we'll probably do is like download the Twitch video and upload it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, YouTubes. I am way off game today. <laughs> it's all good. All right, so let's keep moving on. Um, just real quick programming note. We still have the deal going on with UPS. If you spend over $100 or more, you get free shipping. So that means if you buy a printer, you get free shipping on it. I think if you buy like two spools of filament, you get free shipping, which yeah. is kind of good. Uh, we still have same day delivery in New York City. So if you apply for that, check it out. You also have the newsletters. So you can subscribe to those at adfruitdaily.com. Your daily dose of tips daily. We got a bunch of newsletter, newsletters on there. We got Maker Business, Biohacking, Electronics, as well as 3D printing, wearables, and more. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Blair Blair. This week I just wanted to share with you guys uh, some settings for playing with NinjaFlex. A couple of folks uh, are always curious on the best settings for NinjaFlex. It sort of varies on your printer, but I figured I'd just share the ones for the FlashForge Creator Pro. So I'm using Simplify 3D, but this should work with any other, uh, like Cura, uh, a slicer. I always uh, get this question so of what settings are we using? For I have Splashforge Creator Pro is set up as a profile. I'm using a 0.4 nozzle. The, uh, the extrusion multiplier is at 1. Then you have the default extrusion width, which says it's the 0.48. My retraction is on at 1 millimeter. But you can, you know, for, for depending on what you're printing, you can have it really set to really low, or you can have it set to just turn it off completely. Now, what you want to do is change the the temperature. I, I like to print it at 240, 220 is is a, is a, normally what I pick um, PLA. But uh, for NinjaFlex, it extrudes very slowly, so you want to print it a little bit hotter so that uh, it, it's more uh, it extrudes it flows a little bit better. So really, the, the speed is, uh, you really want to crank it down to like 30. And it's not really 30 millimeters, because if you look at your outline speed and your solid infill speed, you, you have, the default is set to 50%, which is half of what your default speed is. So it's actually really printing at 15 millimeters a second, which is like crazy slow. So just, just a little FYI. Uh, and then the movement, I change it to about 60 millimeters a second. So. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and then you'll see that your first layer is always at 50 as well. So it's it printing really, really slow. 50 millimeters a second, that's really slow. OK, it looks like we're streaming on YouTube. Good. All right, and the, the infill doesn't matter too much. Uh, for this, it's kind of solid anyway. I could put zero infill and it'd be pretty much solid because there's nothing but top and bottom layers. There's only It's only like six layers thick because it's like one millimeter uh, thick. So it's not not really. So it's always a setting uh, infilled you wanna, at all. Yeah. You want to adjust to um, the thickness. And if you look at the <coughs> movement speed when you're when you're when you're previewing your G code, uh, you can see that it's actually the blue color represents like 20 millimeters, maybe even lower. So it it, it is lower than 30 millimeters a second because of that because it's nothing but a, an outline and a solid infill, which is the top and the bottom layers. So yeah, it's really slow. I even cranked it up to 40 millimeters a second because that, then that's really 20 millimeters. So I guess you can get away with a little bit faster. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're printing something like a cone or anything that doesn't have any retraction or any islands where you're like moving between yeah. um, parts, you can go up as high as 90 millimeters a second. Holy crap, that's true. Yeah, um, so I did that with the unicorn. Huh. Yeah, so it really depends on your geometry. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, for best, you know, Start slow and then work your way up, I guess, is the way to go. Um, so, so some things to know about, you know, the first layer is always super important. Um, so here I'm just showing you, um, ex, you know, f actually loading in the filament. You do want to have a complete purge when you do this. Um, I, I tend to like to have my finger on the, uh, the filament when I'm loading it just so that uh, I can feel if it gets buckled at all because mm -hmm. it, it can happen sometimes. It's rare, but you know, it can with happen. Spring loaded arm that has yeah. like the little pinched. If you're not careful, yeah. So just make sure you're extruding. It's very slow again because it's just, you know, it's rubber. <laughs> it's coming out of your pot end. Um, and uh, so printing on a surface like build tack or print in Z plate, it actually fuses really good, almost too good. So I recommend pulling it from the bottom, your part, as opposed to just like pulling it from a feature, because then you might rip the feature off. And if you do rip it off, that alludes that you're uh, that you're having bonding issues. Yeah, it's printing um, too, but too cold, yeah. Yeah. 
you get a little bit of like stringiness even with a one millimeter retraction. Yeah, with NinjaFlex, you always have to do cleanup in there. Yeah, and for one the of the best part. tools for that is the uh, flush diagonal yeah. um, cutters or scissors. But yeah, flush definitely are You'll nicer because you can get into those details. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. That's all I got. That's that's like my little. Yeah, so uh, the recap, workflow. you want to purge, you want to make sure that all of the hard material like PLA, if you were using that previously, is completely purged out. You want to make sure that uh, there's a ni nice amount of NinjaFlex that's purged out of there before you start printing. Otherwise, it can get stuck and buckle as it cools down, as it starts up um, uh, your print. Yeah. And then use blue tape or even acrylic, um, like the Replicator 2. Um, it bonds well, but not super good like it does on yeah the, I really uh, needed this tool to, to sort of get underneath there because mm -hmm. it's like really fused and then when you're pulling it off <laughs> pull it off from the bottom so uh, you don't uh, delaminate your layers yeah my this was pretty strong like th there's no dim I could I cannot pull these layers apart and I think that that really helped out what really helped it out was printing super slow mm -hmm. so you get that extra um, time to, to bind the layers really nice together, to fuse them really well. Yeah, so the default uh, outline uh, under speed um, and infill under speed inside of Simplify 3D is usually around 50%, so it's slower than what your um, top default printing speed is. So you can easily change that inside of Cura or whatever other slicer you're using. Just make sure to slow down um, your outline slow uh, under down. speed. Yeah, 50%. That's that's what I have it as a default. I think most have it as a default. Maybe mm -hmm. a little bit faster, like 60%. I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked at Cure in a while. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you want to pick up some NinjaFlex, guess what, folks? We have a lot of NinjaFlex in the shop. We got a lot of different colors. Mm -hmm. We have Semi-Flex. Uh, regular NinjaFlex. And of Ninja course, Flex. in the all-new Cheetah. CP-Flex. What, what's up with Cheetah? Are you so any Cheetah, updates? Uh, we still only have the three millimeter for that. They are ramping up production on the 175, so we'll have that soon. Yeah. And the three millimeters are for all of the Bowdoin printers that we have, the Ultimakers, and um, should also work uh, very good on the Taz printers. Yeah, Kirby's asking how much does that cost? Oh, uh, no, it was... Uh, how much does what cost? Oh. That's what he's asking somebody. Uh, I oh, think he's talking uh, about the, um, the, the Flash The Flash Forge is like twelve ninety nine from us, but if you use the the 10% discount that kind of helps you. Or if you really want it cheap, get it from Amazon. <laughs> it's like eight ninety nine. dollars You're not going to get free We got snubbed, there. man. Like They, they <laughs> just dropped their prices, and they're yeah, like, sorry, still, resellers. No, nah, we're still cheaper since so you'll get free shipping on that. You'll get 10% off. Pedro's okay, got the, the details for you. That's true. Check that All right, out. more Ninja Flex stuff. <laughs> Check it out. Um, you guys like that Pokemon? Pokemon, got to catch I'm team red. Pedro's team blue. He's the mistaker. I like how we've not even downloaded the app, and we are already don't tell them that. <laughs> we already have to do Pokemon. We're projects. super, we're super elite <laughs> Pokemon catchers here. We catch them all. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is actually Cheetah Flex. I printed this in Cheetah Flex. Pedro, did you show this off last week? I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Maybe Pedro didn't. Is this what is this? This is Cheetah as well. Both it is Cheetah colors. Flex? Yeah. Yours is dual extruded. Mm -hmm. Fancy smancy dual extruded. Super clean. Using the Sigma BCN 3D. Wait, the, the Sigma from BCN 3D Technologies. Mm -hmm. Mine was printed on the Flash Forge, and <coughs> mine is not dual extruded. Mine is uh, single extruded. <laughs> this is like inlay, so I printed this in PLA. This is actually a new color that we want to stock. It's regular PLA, cool gray PLA, so it's got that kind of hint of gray. It's not super white. And it's just printed with no support, no flat like that. And then this is printed flat like this with this cutout. There is a little gap of uh, 0 .2 mil yeah, 0 0.2 millimeters, and it fits perfectly in there. I don't know if I can focus it. There you Very go. Good. So it fits really good, and it kind of stays in place because of the, uh, the tolerances. And it's really, really thin. It's half of a millimeter thick, so it doesn't really um, bulge out when I put it on the case. Um, so we'll be releasing these in the next week or so. Um, they're all designed. Oop, I put it in backwards. How silly me. We should release these, these uh, as soon as we're done with the show, actually, to get right. these out there. But yeah, we yeah. have two versions, the dual extruded one and 
single extrusion. Yeah, Pager designed this in uh, Fusion as well, mm -hmm. so you can modify the design if you want to update yeah, so it. So there are differences. There's uh, cutouts for the buttons on mine, and you have I some have these nice like, lovely buttons already. Yeah, in these there. are like uh, egg, um, embossed buttons, mm -hmm. so they have a little chamfer on them as well, and then the power button has a chamfer as well here on the, on the thing. But the bottoms are about the same. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, but using Cheetah, um, you can print it faster, and you can print it, well, it just prints with better details. You get better overhangs and yeah. stuff, because uh, the sort of the shell hardness is, uh, is different. It is uh, not as rubbery, and it's actually not as grippy. We've talked about it before. That's actually we one made of the a, biggest difference. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of works here, because then like it doesn't get gripped into your pocket and or it something. It slips right in. Yeah. But then like it kind of slides on the table. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of get your um, mm -hmm. pick and choose what Yeah, uh, maybe if I printed this have. in NinjaFlex, regular NinjaFlex, yeah, then it would have a little bit of grip to it. I don't know. It all depends. So there you go. Just some properties to look at when you're deciding on what materials you use. Your logo is bigger, too, than mine. Yeah, no, I need. I, I think I'm going to edit mine so it's the same size as yours. You so like that size? Um, people can. Um, It'll be the same thing, you know. Okay. Uh, so if they do want the cutouts, they can choose this model and still, you know, separate the the, the two SDLs. So they are separated, both. aren't they? I mean, yeah, yeah. When you I bring mean, it so together that, and simplify, they're that's what I mean. Through. So that this will fit inside here if they want to use this and um, have like the cutouts, you know, just so they can have a cool. lot more choices that way. So that this will fit inside mine. Speaking so. of Pokemon, um, quick question here: Somebody's asking, yes. are those Ninja Flex watches? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just rewind the stream. Yeah. Um, They're not watches. They're just like wearables. Yeah. I mean, you could probably make this it. a watch about it. Pages has a different code on his. It's using uh, the accelerometer oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, goggle code, which cool. works really well with uh, Flora and this accelerometer. It is a little bit smaller. The Flora is a... Uh, but yeah, that's because is. you have all of the uh, sensors and buttons. The, the buttons on yeah. that. But, yep. Yeah. Cool. Check those out. Just one stream. That's funny. Okay. I'm going to link to the projects. So. Yeah, I wanted to share Rich Richard's uh, Pokemon Go badge project. So, uh, cool. yeah, which is over here. Yeah, so check out Richard's um, tutorial. It just went up uh, yesterday. Uh, he mm -hmm. used. Um, if you guys don't know, Richard is a frequent guest on the yep. show and tell. Wednesdays at 7.30, so definitely check that out. Yeah, so he actually uh, pinged me and asked if I had a Circuit Playground model, and that's what actually encouraged me to make my own thing. So I um, quickly put that together. And then he grabbed the STL from that and then used Tinkercad to make this uh, sort of shell. So I don't think it's still extruded. I think it's just two pieces that are printed separately and then snapped together. Um, so the whole cover is, um, what do you call it? it it's uh, diffusing the, the, the NeoPixel. So he actually has it as a sort of a badge in the back here, so you can see his friend here. Uh, the code's up there too, so it's, um, it's a great sort of look at uh, how you can write some quick code for, um, for changing colors and using the accelerometer. So when, you shape, when the accelerometer senses movement, it'll uh, flash white, and then you can use the buttons to cycle through different, um, different team colors, really. And uh, here are the different team colors here, red, yellow, and blue. Pretty cool. Uh, let's check it out. His enclosure was made in Tinkercad, like I said. You can download it. And then you need like some straps to strap it on you. Uh, so check it out. Yeah. He, he has a little video, too, on, on putting it together, which is uh, always great. He's using a big battery, too. I'm using like a small 500. I think he's using like a, a 1200. Yeah. Is yeah. <clears throat> that a last nice one? And you can up the, turn up the brightness on that, too. Yeah, so and it's small. It'll fit on any printer. Hunt for Pokemon at night. Yeah, <laughs> so they don't run you over. Cool. All right. Circuit Playground. Many, many uses. Nighttime safety badge. Very cool. Very cow -y. <clears throat> So Excellent project to start off with if um, you want to pick up a Circuit Playground. Yep. Check catch them all. Got to catch them all. Some more shop Make sure talk. to use the CP <clears throat> Flex to get 10% off your Circuit Playground. <laughs> all right. This is my favorite board of all time. Yeah. It's just got everything you need, Super no soldering required. Yeah. It's great. Okay, it's great some for, uh, more shop talk. Learning. We have finished. Top shop talk. Concluded testing of the BCN3 Sigma independent dual extruder printer. Yeah. You want to carry it? You want to stock it in the store? I have sent in the request. Yeah. So okay. we are trying to get those tweaks in that we talked about last week. So mm -hmm. we're able to print 
um, without any modifications at all. So we can do 175 and 3 millimeter. Uh, it's just a simple screw they need to remove. Just one screw. I know. <laughs> That's crazy. The simplest mod. And then you ever. can and then you can use one seven five or three, and that'll be the selling point. You can use whatever filament you want. Mm -hmm. What if the printer Which does that? So Nobody really. Uh, Ultimakers do that as well. But they don't advertise it. They don't say, "Hey, you can use whatever filament you I want." I know, I know. But as you've seen in lots of our videos, it's what we've been using for a very long time now. <laughs> yeah, we have too many one seven five spools. So. <clears throat> so I just ran out of all the three mil stuff. Like, I know. It's because so we have to have like, so so I buy more or use what I have. So, nope. Do you have wire solution? Yeah, so I've right. um, got a short little video here on the 0.6 millimeter nozzles that they sent over to test. Do they sell these separately or does it come with the machine? So, I'm trying to get them uh, for our stock to include those in there because it's such a ginormous time saver Ooh. when you're printing, um, sorry, when you're prototyping something. Uh, something as simple as a box like this usually takes like an hour to print. But using the six millimeter not point six millimeter nozzle, this only took me twenty minutes to print. And but it's so simple. I mean, it's just a box. Closer, <clears throat> closer. Usually takes an hour to print just because of the depth of it, and um, being able to knock that down, you know, knock by the forty time minutes. Down? Yeah, this is crazy. You're able to, you know. Do I'm used to at printing least three at least two hours for like a for like a pie grill case. So you're saying mm -hmm. I could print a pie grill case in like one hour or forty oh, yeah. minutes? Oh yeah, and that's the uh, beauty of this because you're able to knock out you know up to three um, iterations of a prototype. Yeah. Um, with all, with all that time you save because there's definitely going to be you know. Um, movements that you're going to have to make on mounting parts. That seems to be the trend from printer <coughs> manufacturers to include different sized nozzles for different applications. So in this case, when you're printing something really big or uh, something that you want to prototype quickly, a 0.6 nozzle is yeah. superior that, than a 0.4 nozzle. It doesn't have a lot of detail, like, you know, simple a box. box. Yeah. You're, you don't need to have something Closer. with a fine detail on there. And another thing, too, uh, we needed some M2 screws on here, um, some four millimeter length ones that we don't have. And you were like, oh, just use the pins. Yeah, it just, just make nubs. It excellent hard. Um, hard to print nubs. Yeah, so usually like on something like the Flash Forge, these usually break off pretty easy. But on the Sigma, for yeah. whatever reason, it has excellent for whatever uh, detail, <laughs> even with the six millimeter nozzle. So usually these turn out like a goopy mess, you know, and uh, whatever, the way that, that it's constructed, it's able to print these nice and solid. Uh, they won't break off. And well, I mean, you can break them really off with the strong. This yeah. is regular PLA too, right? <clears throat> this is a uh, regular PLA. Actually, no, this is a PLA PHA. So um, people have had experience with that, know that it has a tendency to expand a little bit so it can grow um, as, is, as it's extruding. And even with those properties, it did an excellent job of uh, cooling and printing these out. So these itty bitty little two millimeter or M2 sized uh, mounting holes go on there very well. So we're super surprised with That's that. Uh, I don't need the screws anymore because it just yeah. holds on there very well. Yep. So um, very happy with the quality of this, um, even with using a you know, nice big fat nozzle on there. Yeah, you still get a nice, um, it doesn't look as rough. It's still got a nice uh, yeah, and this smooth is a, finish, I guess. So in addition to um, a 0 0.72 extrusion width, um, this is also a three millimeter uh, layer height, and it looks super smooth. Like, it looks like it was you know, printed at 0.2 millimeter height. Great, yeah. Another uh, advantage of being able to print uh, with the extrusion width up to 7.2 is that we can have thin walls that don't bend or, you know, usually when you're printing with a four millimeter uh, nozzle with like an extrusion width of uh, 0.48, uh, yeah. you can kind of see the thin wall there. That so it's point, usually, it's 0.72, you're saying? That's what the extrusion width is on there, yeah. Why? why? Uh, that's what the auto uh, Oh, so it's just, with, it's, uh, okay, so SVD. it just kind of like does a little bit of math and figures out what's a great mm -hmm. um, width extrusion. Wow. Yeah, okay. so uh, there's no extra, uh, uh, There's no third line in there because it fuses well and they're thick enough to uh, to make yes. a, um, what is it, 1.4 millimeters thick? The wall? Uh, 1.4 millimeters thick. Yeah, wall, so yeah. that's that's what you get. Cool. Uh -huh. And uh, like I was trying to say before, the usually with a, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 
um, you get a gap there. You get a gap. A bigger gap, but anyway. And it wouldn't fuse all the way. It yeah, would be but, like just barely fused. Mm -hmm. But it's like super like not stable at all. Uh, with the extrusion with a 0 0.72, yeah, it is great. just rock solid without cool. having to waste any time. I know, think that's another reason middle. why it's printing faster. It's not doing that extra third line in the middle. Yeah, I mean, you could turn that off, but using 0.4 millimeters, it's not going to be, you know, rock solid. It's going to be, yeah, it's, it's going to bow, thick. it's going to bend. And uh, yeah, great. it's just going to be like completely separated. This is like almost fused together. So very, very, um, yeah, surprise. This is great. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm cool. very pleased with this. So we'll try to get those in very soon. You're using the same tolerance things, like 0.2? Millimeters yeah, of the clearance and all that. Yeah. All right, cool. Which so you is, don't really have to design again, differently for a 0.6 nozzle. No, That's and great. another reason why I'm surprised is because I tried using the six millimeter nozzles on the Ultimakers, and it just came out like a you know goopy mess. I had oh. to step down to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and you know you know waste an hour of printing um, something with no details that didn't you know didn't require that. So super happy with that. Okay. And of course, all of the snap together parts, all the tolerances for that are super, um, what's it called? Uh, I don't super know. solid. You lost <laughs> my train of thought too. All right, cool. So I have a video here, Pedro, of you unboxing a six millimeter nozzle. What do you want to say about it? So yeah, we're just taking a look at how they added their uh, thermal paste on there. That's really what Sorry. I was testing out to make sure that, oh, you could have left it. Nah, let's go back. This is what it comes like in a box. Uh, hopefully it comes with the printer. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> but you can buy them separately if you need to, right? If you already yeah. have a BCN, so mm -hmm. you can optionally get another one. Yeah, right, of cool. course you could get like just the nozzles um, separately, but it's a little bit more faster to just you know take out the entire really? um, assembly. You and think just it's faster? Pop, pop it in, yeah. Big right. yeah, hole, little like. hole. Yep, you can definitely tell the difference on that's there. That's the difference. But the main thing that I was testing uh, with them sending me another 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, assembly was to make sure that the the thermal paste that they've uh, added into the production um, is doing its job and yeah it performed excellent um, if you remember about three weeks ago we were talking about how to add that yourself um, if you pick one up going forward this is what it'll look like now they have that thermal paste already in there and here's just some shots of it printing um, so we're using six millimeters a second on this uh, 175 uh, millimeter filament or diameter filament and I think I turned down the uh, the uh, the retraction to 30 millimeters a second, and then the length for the retraction is 3.5 millimeters. Okay, that's and pretty high, but it's a Bowden, so you need it a little bit higher. Yeah. Cool. So there we go. We have it working excellent. With What's your speed uh, print? Your speed, your print speed. <clears throat> a print speed is 60 millimeters a second. All right, pretty standard. So yeah, we have it working excellent with a uh, three millimeter and 175. And um, the Ninja Flex right out the box was the first thing we tested out, and that's what really impressed us that it's able to print, you know, regular Ninja Flex, which is we can't really do on the Ultimakers unless you like really? drop that all the way down like five millimeters. No, the regular Ninja Flex, uh, the Cheetah, it's no problem. But it's three millimeters print. of filament or yeah. two point eight five, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's so good that you can do both, and you don't have to do too much. You don't have to like tighten the screw, or you do have to tighten the screw. I don't know. Actually, no, you do not. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm so uh, surprised about that. Yeah, on the Ultimakers, you do have to tighten that up what? Uh, when you switch between the, di the diameters. <laughs> it's a way that their gear teeth is designed. That's, it's more forgiving? Yeah. Or is the filament more forgiving? Because it's like, hey, you can squeeze me as much as you want. I'm mm. okay. I'm Ninja Flex. Yeah. I'm not plastic. All right, so uh, more updates to come as we continue to use this. It is now fully integrated into our workflow. Pages workflow. That. I'm still using the Flash Forge. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. That's Shop Talk, is that it? That's it for Shop Talk, unless you want to continue with your CNC adventures on milling aluminum okay. for future upcoming projects. Yeah, sure. So I've been doing a, a lot of testing uh, with the other mill, which is from the other company, or other machine company. Other mill is a really small... Desktop CNC machine? Yes. So I, I, I finally tried milling out aluminum. This is 0.25 inch aluminum which is pretty thick. And I'm using a 1 8 inch bit. And the trick here, I, I've tried milling out a sheet of aluminum before, but I always broke it. And that was because I was stepping down too much. So stepping down is, is um, how, how, how deep of a cup do you want to make and how many passes do you want to make? The more passes, the more time, obviously, 
but the the less of a, aggressiveness that you'll you'll put the less stress that you'll put on your tool I've broken many tool bits because I just didn't know the right depth so for this depth it's actually 0 0.05 millimeters of depth that is really that's like a human hair thin so but it's still only two mil two minutes to mill this out that is really fast so I was able to cut all of these um, little touch pads out of aluminum in in less than like 10 minutes or so I needed six of them so you can do the math there um, yeah this is great um, the tons came out really well this was milled out in wood and these little touch pads milled out in aluminum so this is going to be future project it is my MIDI controller uh, in collaboration with Todd Treese who wrote the software this is pretty cool um, it's kind of combines different additive and 3d printing uh, different materials wood coffee PLA um, now aluminum which is really neat it's it's gonna be a touch sensitive or touch capacitive pads like I was saying it's using the NPR uh, one to one or yeah one to one um, chipset and it'll be using the Adafruit blue fruit feather the BLE feather wing or just feather I guess so yeah that's gonna be a future project oh and a NeoPixel LED a NeoPixel ring so if you look at my Instagram account you can see me already playing with it and I, uh, what I did originally was print these touch pads in conductive PLA which was kinda neat but I really wanted to try out a really you know metal a different type of um, material and mm -hmm. this stuff is really conductive one thing I found I don't have a video of it but I tried soldering directly to aluminum it doesn't work <laughs> it doesn't stick um, and it gets really really hot because you know aluminum's great for like a heat sink Conductive. and stuff <clears throat> it was hot I burnt my fingers <laughs> and so I ended up using copper tape so I don't know it's so thin too like it's like paper thin the um, the metal the metal to break it off here off the, off the uh, the stock you know, with the step downs that you use yeah um, CNCing is really fun I'm still um, there's sort a of lot more thinking of it. there is and there's a lot of uh, there just is a lot of process and setup but I want to start doing a series of CNCing um, tutorials yeah tutorials layer by layer tutorials so I will be working on that um, there's still some things to work out but uh, that is on my to-do list is to start um, starting from like zero like how do I set up my tools because mm -hmm. uh, there is a tool library and it will be mainly specifically for the other mill but I think it'll apply to things like the X-Carve because I think there might be more folks out oh, there with an X-Carve because um, it's a little bit more affordable but uh, you do get incre crazy amounts of precision with the other mill and the yeah. other mill pro this is the other mill pro by the yeah, way yeah so this is primarily made for teeny tiny little details like yeah in, um, point or six five or six mil traces which is crazy thin yeah so good stuff board, that's yeah. that I've been looping this over for like 10 minutes now so that's all I got <laughs> Cool. We will have these in stock pretty soon. They're still ramping up production, uh, production on these. We still have the um, original other mill, though, if you want to pick that up. Yeah, the other mill it. is uh, under like 2600 I forget. Look at the price. You could, of course, get 10% off with the coupon code over there. Yeah, the reason Something why it's out. that much is because of the precision you get on that. In the software. The software the and the, um, the tool bits that you have to use are a lot smaller than your yeah. uh, standard uh, drill bits. Mm -hmm. Yep, if you haven't seen, a, um, Daniel Appstone was on one of the Ask Engineer shows. So you can take a look at that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin did, oh, we're out of stock of them. Yeah, it's, it's actually twenty one ninety nine. the other mill. Wow, we just had four in stock just the other day. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. So the these, other day? Yeah, like, like yesterday? two days ago. <laughs> so, yeah, they go pretty fast. If, They're out uh, of stock, I'm sorry. Put in your... Uh, Click on the notify me um, when available, and you'll get yeah. notified. Yeah, a lot I of universities and education is yeah. really what's using because um, the main reason we got these was to make our own circuit boards. It takes almost a month to get prototypes. Can. Absolutely can. Oh. For when we're doing um, custom PCBs, yeah, this we're able to do in like 20 minutes of you right. know from complete you know scratch of nothing. So that is the ginormous advantage of having um, another mill. Uh, in your workflow. Yep. I think you're pulling it up right now. I am. <clears throat> Real quick questions or comments. Kirby saying that he likes using the point 
uh, two five millimeter nozzle for printing. Um, hey, is that available for miniatures. your Sigma? So I'll post a link on nozzles that are compatible with that. But yeah, they do have uh, 0.25 uh, millimeter nozzles where you can just switch out just the nozzle. Yeah, for that. most printers you can totally do. That. I mean, like every printer you can do that. Yeah. Well, the Ultimaker just about. You can do that, yeah. yeah, the Ultimaker come comes with, with the the two pluses come with <clears throat> 0.25, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, uh, 0.25, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0
And there's some other things out there that does the, that does similar things that is free, so you can check those out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Fusion 360 has Print Studio, which yeah. is an add-on. And it works almost the same for adding supports. Uh, they took that really? same methodolo methodology of okay. adding supports the way that it does with the pillars. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, but it's great only for, for Flash Forges, though. I think really? you can. I think you may be able to export the STL. You with said for the, the Flash Forge. Yeah, didn't you just say um, Flash Print? Right. No, I was saying um, Fusion Three Hundred and Sixty oh, has okay. Print Studio. Ah, no, Print Studio does they have use that the tree branch type. Yeah, um, do you like that? That's great for like resin printing. Um, yeah, it's good for resin printing. Not always the best for FDM. Um, because of how little the branches are. But you can change it. You can't change it. But a lot of it's messing a around weird. with. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, you have your choices. Flex your Pokemon via wearable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Should I start with a printer or a CNC machine? That is a great question. So I think you're going to be able to do a lot more with uh, a 3D printer. Yeah, CNCing is very cool, very effective in certain projects, but there are some things that a 3D printer just is better at. Mm -hmm. And um, I think think you probably want to do 3D printing. I'm a little biased, of course, mm -hmm. but um, there are some designs and geometries that you just can't kind of do with a CNC machine. I yeah. think a CNC is a little bit more expensive, and uh, you have that sort of... Here's the thing the about... The thing about materials and removing, you have a little bit more waste. You have um, more things to learn with cam tools. I think um, learning cam tools is a little bit more... Um, involved than like learning those printing settings. Nowadays, there are a lot of profiles that sort of come with your slicer or come mm -hmm. with your printer. And there's a lot more people in the community, I think, that can help you out with your 3D printer than the CNC machine. Yeah, here's the thing with CNC. Um, you have to generate your own paths. Like, you can't just hit print like a slicer you you know, yeah, generates you all that. Slice. You need to tell it where to go, how fast to spin, how deep to go. Yeah at you know what rate to go the, how thick my material how thick your material yeah. is there is a lot more that that is manual that you need to handhold and tell your cnc to do your printer has you know um end stops it knows where the the bed is it knows you know how high it is if you know level it correctly um well in case with the sigma it levels it tells you how to level it yeah a cnc machine is not going to do that it, if you have your settings wrong it's going to dive right into your plate completely ruin your uh, drill bit. And um, yeah, it, it's a lot more to set up with a CNC machine. Yeah, so. um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to poo-poo CNC. I, I no, actually it's not. really it's just love a lot CNC. More, I mean, it ke like you can't print a teeny tiny circuit board on a 3D printer. No, you can't. You know? So there are differences in that. Yeah, it really depends what you want to do. But for most projects, I think the 3D printer might be it. And they go really well together, like 3D printing and CNC. Oh, yeah. They go really well together in certain projects. But if you're choosing okay. one or the other... Yeah, probably 3D printer. Probably 3D printer. In my uh, opinion. Yep, Riley suggested checking out 3D Hubs. It's a great way to support other people and to get your parts printed. Mm, yeah, for this guy Or you can start your own 3D Hub, too. Hot Cheetos is asking, can we make a Pokedex Pie Girl case? Uh, yeah, I've seen this around. Um, maybe. I mean, I think so. You've started some drawings, yeah. Um, so we got a little sidetracked, but yeah, um, I got to preliminary some yeah. <laughs> yeah. designs have been made. It might be kind of neat. It's a good idea. Have you guys uh, used the X carve? Says Yanni. Uh, nope, I haven't personally used the X carve. I have been eyeing the Cur the Carvey from Instructables. Um, I would love to like make furniture. Uh, desk is something I would love to make. Mm -hmm. Big things, obviously stools, whatever. So, I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll probably, at some point, we'll definitely get a bigger CNC machine and something from Inventables might be the way to go. Um, somebody here is saying that Hatchbox is not, as, is not the best filament. I've, I've heard both things. Like, it's not good, but it is good. I've seen reviews saying it's good. You know, manufacturers, suppliers, um, they can change. So sometimes formulas don't come out as great, or maybe it's in your environment, maybe your temperature wasn't yeah, as great. So many variables. So, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of flaky sometimes. When you get, be, when you be, get yeah. uh, the more economic priced filament, just expect that, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So we have a comment on what is a good entry level entry level printer and filament that that's like should the, use. That's like the common like question. Um, yeah, anything in the Adafruit shop is something that we've tested and we really like the printer bot. Uh, Simples are really good ones. The M3D is pretty neat. It's really slow, but it's uh, it's pretty good mm -hmm. quality wise. Um, they got the duplicator i3s that have the from Wanho, I mm -hmm. think. Which uh, is like a Prusa i3. Yeah, um. and then the Prusa i3 itself. So there's a lot of options out there. It's really hard to narrow it down to one. Depends on your budget. Depends on what you want to do. Yeah. Check out 3D Hubs' buyer's guide. They have a nice buyer's guide. Yeah. They have a lot of reviews. They have one of the best um, community-driven uh, sort of uh, buyer's guide, I think. Yep. Do we have any community makes for this week? Um, I didn't get around to coming up with them, so my apologies. Oh, cool. I think that's it for the questions in the chat. Yeah. Thank you guys for all your questions. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. Um, we got to go soon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry about the YouTube stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. How did I forget to hit the stream button? I don't know. Yeah, Kirby mentioning that, yeah, you definitely need to um, be aware of what um, settings are appropriate for each filament. They're all different. They all yeah. require different temperatures. Um, different uh, retractions. And, now it uh, sounds like CNC, Pedro. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's the, it's not as bad as you know having to tell it how fast to go out deep. Well, you know what? what? Actually, it is kind of the same. <laughs> what are okay. you kidding me? <laughs> They're like the same. <laughs> One's just more uh, messy. One just requires a vacuum. <laughs> you know. So I don't know. All right. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to support the show, support Adafruit, pick up some stuff. Check out Circuit Playground if you haven't already. Use mm -hmm. coupon code CBFlex. That's going to be it for us. We'll be here next week. Enjoy your vac your summer if you are in the hemisphere, whichever hemisphere that says summer. <laughs> it's really hot. Try to stay cool. Don't forget Good to like luck. this video, subscribe, share. Sure. That helps us out too. Uh, good luck with all your maker endeavors. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and drop them in the comments of this video or any other of the videos. We'll get to them. We'll gather them up. Um, this week there wasn't that many. I just answered them already. So. I figured we'd just do live questions. Cool. All right, that's it. Thank you guys again. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, remember, keep on making. See you guys. Bye, everybody.